From the station that made country music famous, 650 AM WSM, this is a Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Maddows, and in this episode, we sit down with Blake Shelton. Bill Cody and Blake Shelton from the long-delayed grand opening of Old Red Orlando. Bill and Blake would chat about the ACM Awards, the new album soon to come out, Body Language, and the 20th anniversary of Austin. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast with Blake Shelton. More Coffee, Country, and Cody is on WSM. Bill Cody, Blake Shelton, Academy of Country Music Awards time. Uh, extra special to be nominated for Music Event of the Year, but it's with Gwen Stefani. Yeah. You've heard of her. You probably have her records in your collection. Yeah. Uh, especially given the fact it's her first ever ACM Award. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been fortunate enough to be nominated in that category a few times over the years, but you know, being nominated with, with Garth, that's cool. With Trace, that's cool. But to be nominated with Gwen Stefani... At, at a country music, you know, award show, and all, and to know how excited she is and how blown away she is to even be accepted into that community at all, you know, I don't, I don't know that she ever expected how welcoming the fan base would be and just the industry, uh, also, you know, that that she could have that kind of success and and we could share something like that, you know. Uh, where are you doing, and I want to talk about your performances specifically, where are you doing your performances and what are you doing during the show? I don't know where in the hell we're doing it at. I think the op- I think Opry House is last I heard. Is that where it is? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're doing our performance at the uh, Grand Ole Opry House. Uh, and, you know, it's I'm excited because, uh, you know, the ACMs came to us, Rat Clark came and, and he knows it's the 20th anniversary of Austin, uh, which is shocking, you know, to me to wrap my head around uh, to wrap my head around that. Uh, it's unbelievable that I'm still able to do this, you know. So we're going to perform Austin and, and honor the fact that it's the 20th anniversary, and then we're throwing in throwing in a little bit of Minimum Wage, which is the current single uh, that we have out right now. It's going to be exciting for me just because that. There's a lot of things that happen between that song and, and this song. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So how long were you in town? That's 2001. When did you, what year did you get to town? I moved to, to Nashville in 1994. I was 17. And I don't know if you remember or not, my first job when I got there, I worked for Mayborn Axton. Yes. Painting her house. And, and I had met her in Oklahoma at one point. And, Hoyt and, was living in a bus in the driveway, wasn't yeah. he? Yes, he was. He's the, and on that first two weeks that I lived in Nashville, as I already, he already uh, had performed Old Red for me, and and said, "Hey, boy, you get get something going. You need to sing that song, you know." And I, damn, <laughs> and I did. So, anything in particular come to mind on why folks don't want to miss the ACMs on CBS? Well, I mean, I was going to say you don't want to miss uh, Gwen Stefani, but she's not going to be able to be there, and I'm. That probably turned a lot of people off when I just said that. <laughs> uh, you know what? We're getting back uh, to performing music, and, and even though it's baby steps, uh, we're, we're actually showing up there, and even though we're having to kind of isolate and do these things in different places, it's going to feel like a, a real award show. It's going to feel like a real concert, and it's not going to be this, something that we've been having to do on Zoom and FaceTime and stuff over the past year because of circumstances we're able to now at least get in the door and bring our bands, and it's going to be some damn good music. Uh, Body Language is the name of the new album. Yes, sir. There's going to be a, a maybe an unveiling, a dance routine of some sort that's a new part of the Blake Shelton stage you know, show. They used to call me Shuffling Shelton uh, <laughs> back in Oklahoma. And so Ada. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Who are you looking forward to seeing? Uh, I know Dan and Shay are a part of uh, your, uh, I forget, what, ex- what's their exact role on The Voice? So it's called a uh, an advisor. They're my advisor. Okay. And uh, and they're on the show. They're all. They got to be on the show. I mean, those kids. I, I've I've uh, been watching their career. They they toured with me on their, when they had their first single out. Oh wow! Uh, for about a year. Listen to this lineup. It was Neil McCoy, Dan and Shay, the band Perry, and me. And it was uh, it was an interesting combination of people. But man, we had a blast out there. It was. Uh, I've often thought that'd be a fun tour to, to get back together again. You know, Neil's crazy, and I didn't know at the time 
uh, you know, the, you know, Dan and Shay, they're both great guys, but Shay is one of the funniest human beings I've ever been around in my life. So it's no wonder to me that they went on to be the big, big stars that they are now. When you mentioned touring, weren't you in Omaha with the Bellamy brothers? And I know there were other people on that tour. When you got the word that COVID had reached a level that yeah. people were shutting down music tours all over the world. You know, we played, uh, yes, uh, we played uh, Wichita, Kansas the night before that. And there was a moment because, uh, you know, I would bring out the Bellamy Brothers and I'd bring out John Anderson uh, during my show and, and, uh, and Trace Atkins. And there was a moment where I went up on stage and the Bellamy's had performed and John Anderson. And I thought to myself, because I would normally go up and hug them and kiss on them and shake their hands, you know, all of my normal stuff. And I had a pause that night in in, in uh, Wichita, and I thought, man, I don't think I ought to be doing that. You know, this was early on in the thing. This was March, and mm-hmm. and uh, and at that point, COVID was just something on the news up in in uh, Washington, basically. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and it was it was starting to pop up a few other places. But I remember thinking, man, I maybe shouldn't be hugging people anymore that probably ain't the thing to do and then by the time the next day got there things had escalated to the point where uh, you know everything was shutting down concerts were, were stopping and we just we made the decision on our own we gotta we can't do this it's just putting people in a, in a tough spot and we'll just come back here and make it up to them one of these days hmm. So the pre-order for your new album, Body Language, it comes out tomorrow. It's been three and a half years since you released a new studio album, a full album. My God. What are the differences? While, yeah. Anything on this album that's a big departure for the fans of Blake Shelton over the <laughs> Well, it's just it's an album. We don't do albums anymore. Been, you heard it, it's been three and a half years. My God. Uh, I don't even... You know, the funny thing about this album is the, the first single off the album is Happy Anywhere, which has already come and gone, and we're on to now minimum wage, so there'll be... A, two first singles released off this album and you know just like everybody we've heard the story so many times now it's boring but COVID just kind of put a stop to our plans as far as an album that we had been working on for a long time but we just literally couldn't go finish it we couldn't get musicians in a studio together we couldn't we couldn't do anything just like none of us could and so Mm -hmm. that's what's taken taken this extra amount of time but for me personally some of these songs have been laying around that have been recorded uh, for almost two years, some of them. So I'm glad to finally get them out out there and get them off my table and, and get them out there. You still love performing Austin 20 years later? Speaking of that song earlier. It has its moments for me. <laughs> you know, there's never a time where I'm thinking in, my, in the back of my mind, man, I just can't wait to get to Austin. That never happens. You know, it happens with, with God's Country or happy anywhere or something more recent you know because those are that, that's a new reaction uh but, but it never happens for me with austin until i start the song and then the the way people respond to it it's like a reminder every night it's like oh yeah that song's why i have a job i i, I always forget that you know but when they hear that intro and they know every single word of the song and they sing it as loud as they can, and I think it just represents a time in, in people's lives, you know, that uh, whatever they were doing in 2001, at my shows, apparently whatever they were doing was was good times because people have a blast when I start that song. It's the 20th anniversary of The Voice as far as television seasons mm-hmm. and how they roll. What's been the secret for you and for that show? Well, I try to have fun there, you know. I, I was telling somebody the other day, I don't know that the show was ever meant to be a funny show at all. But the fact that the way they they casted that first season, there was no way around it because I didn't know Adam yet. But I would soon find out that he doesn't take himself any more serious than I do when it comes to something like that. Uh, and so we immediately were just not only not taking ourselves serious, but we weren't really taking the, the competition serious. All we were trying to do was run each other down as much as we possibly could in those blind auditions. And then you throw in the mix, you know, Christina, who's getting, you know, frustrated with us, and that would just kind of, you know, stir the pot a little bit. And then 
somebody as funny as CeeLo is naturally. I mean, the guy, he's the most entertaining person I've ever been around in my life. It just, I think it accidentally turned into this circus, you know, and it was meant to be this singing competition, which is the one thing that we did take serious was working with our artists. But between the four of us, I mean, you, there was not, you couldn't jab somebody low enough. I mean, it, that's what the competition kind of turned into. And I think seeing these singers that people really didn't know their personalities that well, all of a sudden that exposed on TV and seeing how much fun we had, I think that's really what kicked, kicked the show off and, and got it going like it, like it did. The Blake Shelton brand, Smithworks Vodka, and now Hard Seltzer. Yeah. What are the flavors, and what is it about this seltzer craze? I don't know what it is about the seltzer craze. I've I've found out about it about two summers ago. It's my, we you know we spent a lot of time out on Lake Texoma, uh, and and my sister and, and Gwen's brother and, and families will come in and meet up for Fourth of July weekend and stuff. And one day I started noticing these seltzer things and. And my cooler, it's like, well, what the hell is this? You know, that's the new thing that's getting popular. And and uh, so Smithworks wanted to to get into the market. I think mostly, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a young enough brand still that we're still trying to brand that that Smithworks name and logo and stuff. And, and the seltzer thing seemed like a, a a true thing for me to step into, uh, with it being kind of a, a summertime drink and and the, and the amount of time I do spend outdoors. Uh, the, the flavors are there's a lemonade, there's a, uh, a, 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 a sweet tea, and uh, Strawberry. I think Strawberry. Strawberry, and there's a lime, I think, in yeah. there. Uh, Do you have a favorite? I, well, the lemonade is what I always go back to, you know. I, I, don't, I don't stray far from the classics. <laughs> no Blake or Rita? No, no. <laughs> Couldn't talk them into that. <laughs> and after all this time, Every night on stage, you still really enjoy and love getting out there and doing what I, you do, regardless of the set list we talked about earlier. Yeah, uh, the, the art of doing what you came to town to do, this kid from Oklahoma, and getting to do it at this level. Bill, I, I don't think I've ever really thought of myself as an artist. You know, I see singers and, and people and, and country music artists that I look at them and, and look how they approach what they do, and, and I and I. And they are artists, and, and they're so good at it. Uh, I, I've always just considered myself a country singer, and I love to. I love my connection with with people, and even though I'm singing, I, I'm I'm really up there on stage, just bullcrapping with people in my mind and laughing. And by the end of the night, every night, I have relationships. I'll never see these people again, probably, but I have my moments with people in the audience and, and it's a blast and, and we're in on it and and I just I, I love what I do I've, I've I'm a country singer I, I don't really and I don't really think of myself as, as an artist I don't take myself seriously enough for that yeah. but I, I love my job whatever you call it I, I love it yes and you've given them a memory for a lifetime I hope so yeah Blake Shelton thank you thank you buddy great to see you again you too man from Old Red Orlando with Blake Shelton I'm Bill Cody. Thanks for listening to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Our program director at WSM Radio is J. Patrick Tittle. Our digital producer is Haley Hall. Marketing and promotions director is Amanda Cannon. And I'm Charlie Mattos. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help new people find the show.